Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Pigments, and today I think we should talk a little bit about doing interesting effects or transitions to our songs. Basically those interesting things that kind of bridge the gap between two different sections. So for this example, I basically have just a little bit of a bass here and a pad, and then kind of just showing a quick noise transition, which we're kind of all familiar with, right? Just kind of showed this concept, and then it kind of goes into this section here. So take a listen. Right, so this is a very simple concept, it's a very simple patch, and imagine if we took this out here. It's cool in it just how it just comes in and sometimes that can work, but there's a lot of times where those little kind of interesting things that kind of lead you to think that something's coming, the tension kind of rises and then something just drops into a new section, right? So for this situation here, this is gonna be in one bar's length right here. And this patch is actually very simple, right? So if you look at this here, what's basically happening is that we have all of our oscillator volume down and we're basically just modulating this noise right here, this volume with a function. And I kind of just changed the tension just a little bit here. And the rate here is going to be at one bar here. So it's basically taking one bar from once the note is struck until this function completes and that's gonna be on the volume. And I also put it on the voice pan. So it kind of goes a little bit from the left to the right. So take a listen just to this patch itself. I'll uh, solo this up right over here. So take a listen to that. And in conjunction with that, we have a little bit of chorus, we have a little bit of delay and some reverb. So this is the kind of concept that I did want to talk to you about and kind of how we're how we can use cool things like this in our tracks to do something. So for example, let's go back to this patch here. And maybe let's go to a new preset, right? So we have something blank and we can always go to the analog and kind of think that what can we put on a function that might make something sound kind of interesting. So for example, we have a saw wave here, something kind of like that. Maybe we can get two, something kind of like that. And then we bring our cutoff down all the way. So it's kind of just barely hearing something. And maybe we can put this function on the cutoff and kind of increase this right here. Now it's gonna keep repeating and if we don't really want this kind of behavior, so down here in the functions where this little arrow is where it says play once on retrig source, go ahead and click that. So once we play this one time, it's just gonna open up like that. So something like that. So let's even drop this down one octave and just kind of see how that fits so far. So this might be a little bit different timing. So this is one over two. So let's bring this over to one bar because that was a little bit too quick. So that's something we can do as well. So maybe we can kind of work on this as well and maybe also put the function on the resonance. That might be kind of interesting, something kind of like that. So the resonance also goes up with that one bar time into the next part. It maybe ends a little bit too quickly, right? So we can always go to our envelopes and then increase the release a little bit on the main VCA. And then we can also add other things too, like maybe it would be nice to do a little FM, let's change it to a sine wave. We can do something kind of like that. So put the function over here and then kind of decide how much of that influence that you would like. See what that sounds like. And that can be kind of cool. Or for example, let's say we want to do this to the unison, put this on the unison, kind of go like this. Or maybe do it the full influence. And what might be cool on that to kind of piggyback off that is put this on the detune. So as the bar kind of increases, the sound gets more and more detuned and chaotic and dissonant. So it's increased pretty healthy like that. So this is basically just this concept that I kind of want to drill in your head a little bit. There's so many cool little things that we can do to make tracks interesting or transitions and stuff like that. And we can always save these patches and then just sample them out later if we kind of just want quick access to them if we'd like. So let's kind of back off on this detune a little bit here. I think it's a little bit too much still. Maybe just a small little move like that. Maybe bring this down initially, something here like here. And then maybe even do that with the stereo, right? So kind of have the voices of mono and then they kind of just move through the stereo field as it kind of goes on here. Let's see what that sounds like. And kind of just look to, to things in the synth that we can make interesting. You know, let's try the noise here. So now, now we're putting this function on so many different things as we can see here as it's kind of just all adding up here. So let's add a little bit of noise here, something like that. A little bit more.
So this is kind of the main stuff we can do within this analog engine. I'm sure there's some other stuff we can kind of play around with, but there's also other things we can do for the effects. So kind of think of that if we click this, uh, not this presets, but if we click the, the effects where we can kind of look at all what we have available to us, just kind of think what effects do we have and what parameters on those effects that would be available for modulation in a bar's length, something kind of like that. So for example, maybe you want, we want to do a little bit of distortion here, right? And maybe we can increase this dry wet quite substantially like this, and then maybe automate this drive knob here so it just keeps getting overdriven as it goes on. And that right there kind of just felt tension. You kind of feel like, oh, whoa, something's about to come, ha something's gonna happen, something's gonna change. And the cool part about putting stuff like this on a function, we have all this stuff mapped already, right? So we go to our functions tab, and let's say we like what we've done, but you know, maybe one bar is, is a little bit too long or not long enough, we can just go over here with this one knob and then just change the time it takes for something like that to happen. Maybe we want it to happen in a half note or something like that. We just move our things here, kind of chop this section here. And then we have a little quick one like that. You could extend it to two bars or really however long you'd like. That's the cool part about putting stuff like this on a function because it's easy to change the timings on those. So we have something like this already. The distortion is kind of cool. Maybe something on the reverb, maybe kind of just increasing the reverb as it goes along. So once the drop kind of hits, then we have a huge reverb tail that kind of slowly fade away. Something kind of like that might be nice. So let's give that a try here and put this on the reverb. <laughs> I think it changed the time. Yeah, so we need to go back to one bar here and then it looks like we're good here. Okay. Keep in mind, we have three of these functions available to us that we can always change the shape if we want to and also change the timing. So let's back a little bit off the reverb here, something like that. And then maybe what we could do is let's add, and this might, this is gonna be kind of a cool trick. So we add an EQ, something like this, right? So let's say for example, we want to pick the first band and then we want to increase the gain, maybe tighten up the Q or something like that, right? And kind of move these, something kind of like that. That kind of makes a motion like that. So what we could do is go to the next function and then maybe kind of just make some interesting shapes within here, right? So we could even do something kind of like this, drop this down here, maybe make a point up here, another point down there, point up here and then kind of have, uh, actually have this last point like this and then delete that and kind of have it just rise kind of up like that. So we have something kind of interesting to work with and put that one down like that. So we have a weird kind of shape here and maybe we can make this, I have to know that might be kind of interesting and one time like this and see what that sounds like on this uh, frequency here. So we can put it kind of low and it's gonna or maybe make it do one bar. or even do, do it like something kind of like this, or even take off the one uh, play thing so we can just have a loop. Or one bar. So that's kind of the cool stuff that you can do with stuff like this. And keep in mind, we have so many different effects that we have here. Maybe another cool one could be the stereo pan, something like that. And we can increase the amount with the first function. So if we have this kind of in the center and then we add this like this and give it the full amount, let's take a listen to that. And then maybe also increase the rate to have that even move faster with it. That might be kind of interesting too. And then since we're kind of doing this reverb throw here, we can always change a lot of these different settings or maybe even make the decay a little bit bigger or something like that. So that's kind of the concept I kind of want to drill in your head because there's a lot of times where we get stuck in the eight bar or 16 bar loop. And then we're kind of trying to bridge the gap between either this drop or this chorus that we have into something a little bit more minimalistic, like a break or a verse or something like that. And sometimes it's really difficult to make those seamless changes without certain kind of patches and sound design like this. And it can be even cool if you don't even do it in a sense where something's just quiet. We can do a bar like this, for example. So let's drag all this here and let's duplicate this to the next bar or the next section and do the same kind of thing like that.
And the cool part about stuff like this is that inside these functions, for example, let's take this one off the EQ for now. Let's go to the second function here, and then let's just turn this off for the moment. But taking a look at this function, we can always change this tension here. So if we kind of want it to slowly kind of come in, and once it gets closer to the, I guess for lack of better words, the climax of the track, right, we can kind of increase this tension or reduce this. So right before that happens, it's kind of like slowly coming in, and then it just really hits really fast. Or we can do it kind of more of a convex. And it's all up to taste. So let's do one more cool thing before we let you go, because I do kind of want to drill this concept in your heads and kind of just think how many of these different possibilities that there are out there like that. So maybe we can do something interesting with a flanger. So let's go for the BL20 flanger and let's kind of see how this would sound in the, in the signal chain. That might be kind of interesting as well, but unfortunately we can't automate this knob. So what we can do is maybe have this kind of high up like this and then maybe automate the, or modulate this dry wet knob with the first function, something kind of like that and give it a full amount, see what that sounds like. And maybe change the cut up here so it has a little bit more higher frequencies to work with. Maybe the FM again, that might be interesting. And then once the drop or something comes in, you can kind of put like a low end hit, like an 808 or something like that. And it will kind of really tie in all of that effect. And alternatively, here's just another cool tip I'll leave with you before we close the video out. If you do sample something like this out, what's kind of interesting is you can sample this out and then reverse that waveform and then have something like that kind of go into the, the drop there. So it kind of does it backwards in a weird way. It's really fun, kind of experimental to do weird stuff like this, but I think these kind of transition effects and these kind of little nuances in our tracks kind of just make things interesting, I guess, ear candy, if you call it like that. So I'm gonna put this patch up for download in case you want it for whatever reason, just to look at it and see how many things we've mapped to the first function here. And I think while we're at it, let's go back to function two and just turn back on this EQ thing there. And yeah, so that's gonna be this patch. You can put stuff on macros if you would like to, but generally I kind of really don't because it's already, it's like an automatic thing that you press a note and things just happen. There's not really a lot of time to go and play around with macros. I'm not saying you can't, but yeah, that's just kind of how I approach that kind of thing. So yeah, this one's up for free download if you would like to get it. And yeah, start kind of thinking of cool kind of transition effects or something like that. If something cool that pops in your mind, let me know in the comments below. That's kind of curious because maybe there's some cool things that you come up with that I have no idea about and like to put in a track. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully got that brain moving a little bit and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.